Hi everybody, it's Travis the Pagan Scholar and I'm really excited to go over the Angelarium Oracle deck. This is going to be a review. I've never reviewed an Oracle deck before, so let's figure this out. So just off the bat, the art is amazing. It has this haunting and very delicate uh, aesthetic to it, which is beautiful and very appropriate for angels. So this is Angelarium, it is an angel deck, and it is based off of the angels or the Sephirot, the, the emanations in Kabbalah. So I actually took a course on Kabbalah in college. Uh, do I practice Kabbalah? No, I do not. Do I profess to be an authority on Kabbalah. No, I do not. In fact, I, I don't even know how to Vogue very well, so my, my Kabbalah is, is pretty, <laughs> pretty low. But I do have experience with it. I did study it underneath a rabbi for four months and at a college level, and I have these notes, uh, actually, so that's kind of cool. I have sold most of my college books, but I still have Inner Space, this violently pink book. Actually a book that the rabbi um, assigned us as, as reading for the, the course. It's by Rabbi Arhe Kaplan. I thought it would be really cool, like after I do this review, to maybe start digging into this again, to use the Oracle deck as a tool to kind of dig into this, because I really appreciated and enjoyed Kabbalah a lot. I thought it was really neat and it had so much weight, so much history behind it, and we usually equate history with authenticity even though we shouldn't, but it's still the thing in your head, you know? And so even though I am not um, Jewish, I am not practicing of the Judaic faith, I feel like it is still a tool that is open and available if done appropriately you know, and not appropriative, I don't know. Anyways, all right, I'm gonna show you the deck and I'll give you my, my thoughts on this, so. Much like the tarot, kind of like the tarot, the deck is actually divided up into two different kinds of angels. So you have the emanations on the Tree of Life, which is a diagram, a, a metaphor, a symbol in Kabbalah, uh, and even after taking an entire semester's worth of lecturing on the Tree of Life, I'm still not sure exactly what it's supposed to be. <laughs> but it's, it's sort of like a map to divine alignment. Basically, uh, we're supposed to, through meditation and practice and, and being aware and conscious, of all of the things going on through the teachings of the Kabbalah, we can begin to align our souls to become more harmonious with Keter, the crown, which is the closest thing to Ein Soif, Ein Sof, Ein Soif. The, the, the rabbi said Ein Soif, so I'm gonna go with that. So, but to God, to endlessness, to existence, creation, everything, basically. And so, on the tree of life, there are points and the sephirot are manifestations, emanations. It's a very poetic system. Can you tell why I'm drawn to it? And they represent v not quite virtues, but um, just they're, they're centers of attention that we can stress in our lives to bring us closer to harmony with Einsleif. So, um, that's half the deck, and the other half are these angels that I think he's made up. I have never heard of these angels before. Oh, he's kind of invented or, or supplemented alongside his art um, extra angels, or, or just unabashedly angels. Instead of Sephirot, they are angels, which are lesser emanations, or they're, they're a separate class in, in angelology. Um, so anyways, uh, let's, let's go through the, the Tree of Life and then let's go through the, uh, the angels and we'll, we'll talk about it and it'll be really cool. So the book came in this very sturdy box. It's the deck, not the book. Um, and it's 
comes with the cards and also with this booklet, which looks like it's a lot of information, but this is low Scarabeo and it's published in a couple of different languages. So really all of this is only that much <laughs> in your chosen language, but it does come in English, Italian, Spanish, French, Russian, and another language. It went through the book a little bit and it does give you some key points on on the mystical aesthetic that is each sephirot and the kind of the jive of each of the angels that is in this. Um, however, as Matt pointed out on his blog, which I'm going to link below, without a precursory understanding, without a already affinity to the Kabbalah to understanding it and knowing where it's coming from and what it all means, it can kind of be a bit like, have fun, you know, it's it's kind of lawless, in, not lawless, but uh, it, it sort of can go over your head if you're not already in the know, if you don't already have a good book on Kabbalah. So buy it, but also look for maybe Inner Space or some of the other books that I might recommend later on in the future because this is now going to be a thing probably. So the cards themselves, which is why you clicked on this video, we have Keter the Crown and it's really cool actually, um, <laughs> as it should be because it's fucking Keter. So Keter is this beast of an angel, which is, is apropos because it's, it's everything. It's the, the closest you can get to endlessness without dissolving into nothingness. Uh, none of that makes any sense at all. But it is sort of like, it's, it's more than the crown chakra. It's... Uh, it, it escapes interpretation. Next up, we have Chokma, 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 and it's interesting how they've they've said that it's right eye. So uh, the rabbi that I studied this under, he did mention that the tree of life is often associated with uh, as, as a diagram, as a metaphor of the body and sometimes the sephirot are represented in parts of the body. So we have the crown, the two eyes, the two hands, the two feet, the sexual organs, and um, it's, it's not quite a perfect map onto chakra work. It's kind of its own thing, which makes sense because it's its own thing. It's Hebrew, it's not Dharmic. <laughs> the right eye being wisdom, chokma, and bina, are represented as the right and the left eye, and usually Hokma comes first and Bina comes second, because Hokma is described as the flash of inspiration, that that moment, that spark of of clarity, and Bina, being knowledge instead of wisdom, is sort of like being able to put it all together and making the math work. So Hokma might be marveling at the architecture of a building, whereas Bina is being an architect and being able to put all of that marvel together into a specific space. The images are moving, but at first glance, I'm not sure if they represent exactly what that means. I mean, they do. They require a lot of study, which I think is appropriate for a, a Kabbalic message, a Kabbalic system or tool. He has gone with the idea that Chokma is masculine and Bina is feminine. They're represented as kind of androgynous, but like Chokma has no breasts, whereas Bina does. And Bina has no, um, oh, well, Bina has, yeah, so it's, it's kind of this interesting display. Uh, but they're, they're really neat. Chesed, Chesed, Gevura, and Tifret are the next three pillars in the Tree of Life. So Chesed, 
chesed, I, like I said, I don't speak Hebrew, is the right-handed. It means empathy. It means mercy. It is the pillar of, of the opposite of severity, which is um, gevura. So we have this polarity, this, this dichotomy, but what is really interesting is that chesed is considered masculine and severity in gevura is considered feminine. And that's usually reversed in a lot of different systems. But these cards are kind of blatant. They're representations of mercy. We have chesed cradling an orb which we take to be the earth and Gavura being a sword-wielding bringer of death. Um, and then Tifret is beauty. And I don't really care for this representation of beauty, this, this representation of Tifret, because Tifret is supposed to be the blending of, of the two between it. And it's not that one is black, one is white, and Tifret is gray. Tifret is all of the aesthetics and beautiful lines that come about between mixing severity and mercy, that come about between blending these two things. And so it's not just a gradient, but there is difference and there is all of these beautiful things that arise out of Tifret, all of this harmony that comes from it. And so I'm, it's not my favorite representation. It's still a beautiful representation, but it's not my, favorite so next we have the um the lower we're, we're getting closer and closer we're getting further away from keter from crown uh zimzum is a jewish word that means constriction or removal so the there is more zimzum i don't know how to put it but we're constricting and moving further and further away from the crown from keter so now we're at Netzak, Netzach, and Chod. So Netzach is uh, endurance, but it's also interpreted as victory. Here, the artist has gone for endurance. It's got this Promethean figure who is holding up the world, and it's it's good. Uh, I think that it again, weighs heavier on the side of endurance, but, um, and then with Hod, Hod is kind of weird. It's got this beautiful angel that has, it doesn't really say submission to me. It just says acquiescent. There is a silence about it that, that denotes submission, but it's not my immediate idea of submission. It's, there's still a lot of grace but there is grace within submission because Hod is supposed to be the idea that we submit to the grace and grandeur of the endlessness that is creation or something like that. Um, so again, it's, it's, it's a beautiful card nonetheless. Yasod, Yasod is an interesting interpretation of connection. It's, it's the gateway, which I can see that clearly and it is balancing between Chod and Netzach, but uh, I don't know. I'm just I'm gonna have to dwell with this one a little bit more. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful card. I just I'm not certain yet of it. Malkut, kingdom, and this is actually a brilliant representation of of Malkut because it is an angel and the sphere shows a cityscape inside it and Malkut is the actual physical tangible world it's the actual kingdom um of ein Sleif, of of endlessness it's a little bit violent looking but i think that just denotes the physicality of the world around it of the very rawr nature of of Malkut, of of ground of the kingdom so um, those were the Sephirot. I'm going to have to go a lot faster through the angels, but I will show them to you presently. So with the angels, there's a couple of them that are angels of physical things that happen in the world around us. They're manifestations or avatars of, of the natural world around us. And I really like these cards more, actually, <laughs> than the angels that he's come up with that represent 
constructs. And so the Angel of Rain is one of my favorite cards, and it's the card that I'm starting to harmonize the most with. I think it's because growing up in Texas, we prayed for rain. <laughs> growing up in a farm family, in an, a family that depended on the weather for its livelihood, agriculture, we, we prayed for rain, and it was a religious experience when it started to rain. So, yeah, I can get behind Matariel. I, I, again, I've never heard of that angel before, but it's a beautiful image and it evokes a lot. Like, I'm getting a little bit emotional thinking about it. So, anyways, secondly, uh, the angel of verdancy is a beautiful representation of, like, the fecundity of Earth. This really kind of welcoming, interesting, idea uh it's it's just something to behold it's something really cool so sandalfon is some an angel that i have heard of before but i've never seen it done this way and it's kind of neat this very gemini-esque idea they they bo both look kind of young they don't look like terrifying demonic angels they look like like little creatures that would be responsible for heralding new life into into the world. So when it comes to the human construct angels, it's interesting the choices that he's made because some of the you can like lump them into a couple of different categories. So you have an angel of divination, which is kind of interesting in the fact that angels usually denote kind of like a hard universalism or a destiny whereas divination is kind of up to interpretation or it's up to chance, um, it usually changes. And that's, I feel like that's not something angels like. <laughs> but alongside that, you've got an angel of dreams, an angel of visions, and an angel of mysteries. Then alongside him, you've got the angel of vengeance, which has a hole in its head. And you've got the angel of annihilation, in, which looks like a World of Warcraft character, and then you've got the Angel of Punishment, who also has a hole in its head, um, and they're very cool, very, like, ferocious looking, but, um, then you've also got the Angel of Mercy, and the Angel of Mercy just looks kind of not what I would expect to be an Angel of Mercy. <laughs> um... And it's like, once you ask yourself these questions, like, what do these abstract representations mean to me? How are they communicating with me in my life? What is resonating with me? What is the reason for me to dwell upon such abstract and metaphysical concepts? I think that that's really good. I just don't know how useful some of these interpretations are. So anyways, um, I love this. I think that it's great and I'm really excited to to explore it. Like I said, I've never really picked up on Oracle decks. I have some and I think they're beautiful, but I've never truly engaged with an Oracle deck 100%. I feel like you really have to already be invested in the aesthetic of the Oracle deck before you really fall in love with it and are able to work with it. So this is really cool. Like, I'm already into this. I'm already into weird abstract metaphysical concepts in terms of divine spirits. And so <laughs> this deck is, like, perfect for me to to figure out how to use in an Oracle deck. All right, guys, I'm going to try and edit this down to where it's not forever long. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited about this. I'm going to go through my old notes. I am going to pick up my, my old books again on the Kabbalah, and maybe I can start like a video series on that. It'll be really fun to see where that goes. If you have any wisdom for me of, of ways to pr correctly pronounce things, or if maybe you know that he didn't make up the angels, that they are actually um, named and existent somewhere else, uh, please let me know. I really love the comment sections of my videos. I love learning from you and the exchange of ideas, so please comment below. Thank you so much for watching everybody, and I hope that you found this entertaining, and as always, merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again.